I got your package. Those pink coconut things have made me quite popular. While snacks may come and go, there are still those fallen soldiers we can't seem to completely let go of yet. So here are more of the top 10 discontinued snacks Americans miss the most. Part 6. High C Ecto Cooler why do you have an original Ecto Cooler juice box from 1989? Who do you call if you ain't afraid of no ghost? Hi C, that's who. They've got the perfect drink for you, or at least they used to. To celebrate and market the real Ghostbusters series in the 1980s, Hi C created a neon green orange tangerine drink called Ecto Cooler. Its disturbing color was supposed to symbolize Slimer, a ghost made up of pure ectoplasm in the Ghostbusters franchise. He slimed me. That's great! Surprisingly enough, even after the hype of the movie started to fade away, Ecto Cooler still remained on the shelves for quite some time before it was eventually pulled. There was something so enticing about the glowing, fluorescent drink that made it irresistible. While it did end up leaving shelves for a while, Ecto Cooler became available again for a limited time when the new Ghostbusters remake hit Cedars. Now that there's a new Ghostbusters movie on the way, rumor has it that the funky, sugary juice will also make a comeback. Give you 20 bucks for it. <laughs> nice try. However, we'll only believe it when we see it. Smurf Pasta. Thank goodness for Chef Boyardee. It's Smurfy good. To be honest, one of the most efficient ways to sell anything is to tie it in with a popular kids' movie or show, especially when it's a very famous one. Chef Boyardee understood that pretty early on and took full advantage by releasing Smurf Pasta, a can of Smurf-shaped pasta in none other than Papa Smurf's special sauce. It came in four delicious flavors, including spaghetti with meatballs and beef ravioli. The Smurfy Good For You pasta was obviously a huge hit and was flying off the shelves all throughout the 1980s. It's unclear exactly when or why these little cans of tomatoey greatness disappeared, but all we know is that it must have been a tragic time. You rats! Outsmurfed again! According to the commercial, Gargamel stole all of the Smurfs' food until Papa Smurf magically created the Smurf pasta. But pasta wasn't the only food Smurfs were involved in. A line of cereals to accompany your Saturday morning cartoons was also released in two flavors, the Smurf Berry Crunch and Smurf Magic Berries. The Berry Crunch quickly became a morning staple with its fruity red and blue cereal, which was followed a few years later by Magic Berries with mini marshmallows added in, which sounds totally Smurfalicious. Smurf exactly. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Pudding Pies. Let me get you guys some napkins. What for? Cowabunga! It's time to bring back vivid memories of those who grew up watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. From canned pasta to fruit juices, you couldn't escape Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, or Leonardo. The most notable food tie-in had to be the pudding pies. Nothing screams delicious more than very big, very green pre-packaged pies, right? Well, as it turns out, a disturbing color is exactly what these delights needed for them to be a success. Yeah, let me have it. Let's give it to them. These neon pies were said to be heroes in a half shell baking a surprise, at least according to the 1990s commercial. Filled with mutagen goo that came straight from the sewer, don't worry, it was actually vanilla pudding, the pies had a flaky crust and came in four different wrappers, one for each turtle. As an extra goodie, every wrapper had a pudding point, which could be used to receive mail-in merch like metallic battle signal clickers, a Ninja Turtles t-shirt, trading cards, and stickers. Hostess ended up keeping the pies on the shelves for longer than originally intended, but Doomsday eventually came and the dessert was retired. No! Nestle Magic Balls. Wow, chocolate. If you're a 90s kid, then you'll remember how much fun Nestle Magic Balls were. Pretty similar to Kinder Surprise Eggs, Magic Balls were these big, thin chocolate spheres with a fun prize inside, typically either a Disney or Pokemon character. But even though they were basically destined to be a huge success, they were discontinued in 2004. What exactly happened? After all, we are from the land of chocolate. Well, it has everything to do with the danger of the toy found inside. 
By 1997, Nestle had received so many complaints about the toy prizes being choking hazards for children that despite efforts to convince parents they were safe, the company was not able to keep them on the shelves. So, in the year 2000, Nestle re-released the candy, only this time with a new name and concept. The candy was now called Wonder Balls, with the toy being replaced by even more candy. Sadly, though, the product was discontinued again after being bought by the Frankfurt Company. You can still manage to get your hands on some Wonder Balls if you wish to relive your childhood. I believe I can bring him back. You can scope out either eBay to find some deals or surf certain candy websites for a chance to still get a taste of the delicious wonders of Wonder Balls. Sour Cream and Onion Doritos. Congratulations on becoming CEO. Do you know anyone at Doritos? No matter the flavor, Doritos never seems to miss the mark, and back in the 1970s, it broke new records of tastiness when it released the sour cream and onion flavor. These bad boys were delicious and received a lot of praise from fans, but despite their popularity, the company discontinued them the following decade. Why? What made these chips so special, you ask? It's not uncommon to see sour cream and onion flavor potato chips, but tortilla chips? That was unheard of. The chips did make a brief and much acclaimed comeback in 2013 as a throwback flavor, but again, it didn't stay on the market long enough to become a regular flavor. I hey. love in Japan, you can still get your hands on some, if you know where to look, but it seems like this tangy flavor will not be back on our shelves anytime soon, if ever. That said, some amateur Doritos testers have confirmed that the Cool Ranch variety comes very close to the original flavor, so there is still hope for anyone looking to experience sour cream and onion Doritos without traveling overseas. Willy Wonka's Peanut Butter Oompas. I know what you're thinking. They can't be doing what they're doing, but they are. While Reese's Cups dominate the peanut butter slash chocolate market, there was a time when another snack was close to the top, Willy Wonka's Peanut Butter Oompas. If you remember the movie and you remember the little orange guys, then you should know about the PB Oompas. They were practically like oversized M&Ms, only they were filled with a little extra flavor. With half peanut butter and half chocolate in the middle, they were the absolute perfect treat. Perfection. For a brief, limited time, there were the strawberry Oompas, which replaced the peanut butter layer with a strawberry flavor. The Oompas were first released in the 1970s, even before Reese's Pieces came into play, but were discontinued not too long after in 1983. What do you want? Nowadays, Nestle still makes Oompas, only it's not the good, chocolatey kind. Now, they're all about colorful fruit flavors. Thankfully, there are still peanut butter and chocolate snacks available, like PB M&Ms, for instance, but it will still never be the same as the real Oompa Loompa Doompity Do goodness. The taste simply lingers, just like the song will in your head forever. Jello one, two, three. I hate Jello. Oh, come on, there's always room for Jell-O. It used to be featured in literally everything and was the star of every cookbook in the 1950s. However, it was in 1969 that Kraft Foods took things one step further and released a product that would make preparing a popular Jell-O dessert even easier, Jell-O 123. It was basically a packet of Jell-O mix that would separate into three layers. Picture the texture of a cup of Jell-O, pudding, and mousse together in one serving. It was like eating three desserts in one. To prepare this culinary gem, all you needed to do was add the mix to boil in water, blend it, and let the fridge do its magic. How do you make Jell-O? Just mix it with water and let it sit. The problem with this snack wasn't the taste. It was actually pretty beloved. The issue was with the preparation process. Many complained that it took too long to do and didn't have the patience to wait for the layers to separate. I get away with this for another 122 years, you see. Sales began dwindling, so Kraft started to phase out the product in the mid-1980s until it was completely discontinued in 1996. Kraft still has the recipe on their website that recreates the fluffy dessert with a Jello packet and Cool Whip. Space Dust. Yeah, they're Pop Rocks. They crackle in your mouth. 
There was no greater joy as a kid than popping a bunch of pop rocks in your mouth and feeling the tiny explosions on your tongue. And of course, you would always go up to your friends and make them listen to the popping sounds. Needless to say, those candies are the definition of success. This is why, about two decades after Pop Rocks were introduced on the market, General Foods decided to piggyback off them and create their own version, Space Dust. Space Dust was essentially the same as Pop Rocks, only it was ground up into a fine powder and sold in more out-there packaging. Obviously, it was an instant success, and kids loved it, so much so that some stores were struggling to keep it in stock and sidewalk hustlers began selling the stuff on street corners. Wow, the cherry tastes delicious! I'm sizzling great! Unfortunately, the hype was very short-lived. Back in the 1970s, when the candy was first released, there was something called angel dust, also known as PCP, going around, and it was, well, let's just say, an illegal substance. Fizzle rocks. They're new just hit the streets. Rumors began going around that the candy wasn't safe and it was putting children too much at risk of trying the real deal, which proved damaging for the company. Even after rebranding to Cosmic Candy, the fizzing treat still fizzled out and was discontinued. Reggie Bar. Reggie, the candy they named after me. The Reggie Bar was named as a tribute to baseball great and one-time New York Yankees right fielder Reggie Jackson in 1976. It made its debut at the Yankees' home opener as a novelty candy, but sadly didn't play for the team very long as it was benched only a few years later in 1982. There's no crying in baseball! We were lucky enough to be blessed by the return of a slightly tweaked bar back in the 1990s, but even then it didn't stick around long enough. The disappearance of Reggie bars might have had something to do with what fans used them for, aside from catering to their sweet tooth. You see, the bar was given to fans who walked into Yankee Stadium, and when Reggie would hit home runs, people would sometimes get a little too worked up and throw the bars onto the field in celebration. Chocolate! Obviously, this was a bit of a safety hazard. Gator gum. Wouldn't it be amazing to be able to quench your thirst without actually having to drink anything? Gatorade was one step ahead of everyone when it came out with Gator Gum in the late 1970s. Yes, you heard that right. Sports drinks can play the gum game too. Gator Gum came in two different flavors, a lemon, lime, and orange, which were the two original Gatorade flavors. Water sucks. Gatorade is better. Gatorade partnered up with the Fleer Corporation, which was the first company to ever successfully manufacture bubblegum. Literally everything was set up to succeed. The only problem was, it didn't. Gator gum was phased out a couple years later as a result. The commercials promoted that their magic bubble gum was a way to conquer dry mouth by chewing up a storm, but by gum standards, it didn't exactly do that. I'm all hopped up on hard baseball card gum. Some people thought the gum was far too sour tasting to be any level of refreshing, and its popularity never really fully took off. But fans of the chewing gum didn't mind the bitter taste and enjoyed the unique flavor. Today, if you want to get your quench from a gum, you need to turn to, well, Quench, another chewing gum based on gator gum that was created by Muller Sports. We've got more. Just tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. And hey, leave us a comment.